Good morning, church. I have been avoiding today's topic for about a week now. Anyway, on Sunday, I briefly talked about prayer, and I said that I could give you a whole list of verses on why you're supposed to believe what you pray for, but then I made this big point that you weren't supposed to have confidence in your own prayers because of a whole number of other reasons. Well, today I figured I would probably just spend a little bit of time walking through the passages that seem to indicate that you should believe in your prayers, and then other passages that seem to indicate maybe you shouldn't, and hopefully I'll bring it all together again at the end. So go along with me on this little journey. I, I think we can handle it together. Anyway, it all begins in John chapter 14 for us. 14 verse 13 through 14. Jesus says this to his disciples the night before he's crucified. He says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is one of the amazing promises that Jesus gives us where he simply says, okay, I think the Father can get glory from what I do. So if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And okay, let's just keep moving. If I, if I talk about every one of these passages, we'll be here all day. So let's just keep moving. The next one is John 15, seven through eight. Jesus says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here Jesus is saying, the Father gets glory and it's all coming about if the disciples bear fruit and so that's why you can ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. Let's keep going. Another one, John 15, 16. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Or then this one from John 16. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Yeah, I would say that. If I could ask God for anything I wanted, then I would, and he would do it for me, then I would imagine my joy would be complete, right? Wouldn't you be the happiest person in the world if you always got your wish? Actually, that doesn't sound right. Jesus says, ask for anything in my name, ask for whatever you wish, the Father will do it for you, so that the Father gets glory, so that fruit gets born for the kingdom, and so that your joy may be complete. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, the Father has in mind doing something for his own good, his own glory, doing something for your ultimate good. Maybe there's some other passages we could look at about this. And, you know, and a lot of people would look at the Gospel of John and they'd be like, well, you know, John's an outlier. There's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and they're pretty much the same. But John is kind of an, a different gospel. And maybe maybe John was just being a little bit too aggressive with what he said. Or, or maybe, in fact, John wasn't accurate in how he reported things. Maybe John was saying, you know, Jesus is going to do anything you ask him to do. But the idea that John is out of line with the other Gospels doesn't make sense. In fact, let me show you what Matthew chapter 7 says. Jesus says in verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This is something Jesus says repeatedly. It's not just in the Gospel of John, and it's not just on the night before he's crucified, and it's not just to his disciples. He says it repeatedly in so many contexts. Look at this next one. In Matthew 21, 22, it says, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And there you go. Jesus is saying all you have to do is believe. You ask then you believe, and then you're going to receive. It's a great thing. Well, look at this next one. In Mark, it's not just Matthew and John, it's also Mark 2, Mark 11, 24. Jesus says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, 
and it will be yours. Again, this is Jesus giving us one of these blanket statements that sounds like it's a guaranteed, give me a wish and I'll grant it. I get people regularly who ask me this question. What do these verses mean? I myself ask the question. This last week, I've been reading these verses repeatedly and I've been thinking to myself, I don't want to talk about these verses because they're too obviously wrong. See, the reason I say it's wrong is that we've all done this. We've all prayed a prayer that didn't get answered in the way we thought. We've all prayed a prayer and then tried our best to believe and then didn't receive and then had to wonder, did we fail God or did God fail us? I mentioned this a little bit on Sunday, but I'm just going to highlight it for you today. I think there are three major reasons why the results of our prayer are different from what we asked for. Three major reasons why the results of our prayer end up being different from how we prayed. Reason number one we talked about on Sunday. It's bad motives. In James chapter 4, verse 3, it says, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. If you are asking God for something that is only about your pleasure, then God isn't interested in uh, fulfilling that wish. God isn't interested in answering that prayer. Because, see, God's got a bigger picture in mind than just your pleasure. That is most obviously illustrated in Jesus himself. Jesus, the night before he was crucified, in Luke 22, we read this. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. Well, maybe they did pray, but they fell into temptation anyway, because they fell asleep right away. Anyway, he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. An angel came from heaven, appeared to him, and strengthened him. A couple things I want to say about this real quick. In James, we learned that our bad motives could be the reason why our prayers don't get answered. But this passage gives us another reason. God's will could be in conflict with your will. God's purpose for the world might be different from your purpose for you. And so here's Jesus. He says, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. And immediately after that, an angel comes to strengthen Jesus. The angel is definitely saying, Jesus, I'm not going to answer your prayer for you. But I'm going to come and do something different for you. I'm going to give you strength. See, sometimes we ask God for one thing, lift this cup away from me. And God gives us something else, strength for the day. And it's because God's purpose in the world is bigger than your purpose for yourself. But it's also because God's purpose for you is bigger than your purpose for yourself. I want to show you this passage from 2 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul writes this. He says, Because of these surpassingly great revelations, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Here's the Apostle Paul saying very clearly, I wanted God to take this thing away from me. But God's purpose for me was that I stay humble. And so he allowed, maybe even gave me, this tormenting thing in my life. We don't know what Paul's besetting thing was. We just know he prayed on multiple occasions. And God didn't do for Paul what Paul wanted God to do for him. So here's the question. Jesus makes this blanket statement. Ask for whatever you wish. Believe that you've received it and it will be yours. But Jesus himself prays, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And Paul, 
who would say he's experienced the closest walk with God of anyone other than Jesus, Paul himself says, to keep me humble, God left this thing in my life. And God brought me his strength instead of a solution. I wanted a solution. I wanted the thing to leave me. But God brought me strength instead. Listen, here's the deal. When it comes to prayer, how God answers is a total mystery to us. And we can't presume to know what God is going to do, nor can we presume that God is going to be beholden to our ideas. God, you have to do my prayer request the way I want it to be done. No. But that might turn you off to prayer altogether. And you might say, well, wait a minute, maybe I just shouldn't pray at all. And then I would say to you, no, but Jesus is asking you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. The problem is I don't know which door will be opened. The problem is I don't know what you will find and I don't know what you will receive and neither do you. But the asking, the seeking and the knocking are still what we need to do. So here we go. I'm going to leave you with two final thoughts. Number one, don't stop praying, especially in those moments when things aren't working out the way you want them to or the way things, when things aren't working out the way you think they should. Pray, pray, bring it to God. Bring your circumstance to God. Bring your situation to God and let him know exactly what's on your heart. I believe in the process. He will give you enlightenment and strength and perspective as you ask for what you think you want. But number two, just trust that a good God is in control and he's doing what's best. Don't stop praying, but don't stop trusting that a good God is in control and he is ultimately doing what is best. What is best for you? What is best for the world? And what's in line with good motives? Let me pray for you today. Lord, I ask that you would be with all of us and that you would help us to be people who constantly bring our desires and our requests to you, who trust you in the midst of the storm, not to do what we expect, but to do what's best. Give us the ability to have confidence in our prayers that a good God will act, but not confidence in our specific angle on what we think we need, because you are so much better than us, so much smarter and wiser, and we will trust you. So Lord, be with us today. Help us to be people of prayer and help us to be people of trust. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a prayerful and a great day.